chapter 30, Nature Makes the Locust with an Appetite for Crops. Man would have made him with an appetite for sand. Puddinhead Wilson's New Calendar. We spent part of an afternoon and a night at sea and reached Bluff in New Zealand early in the morning. Bluff is at the bottom of the Middle Island and is way down south, nearly 47 degrees below the equator. It lies as far south of the line as Quebec lies north of it. And the climates of the two should be alike, but for some reason or other, it has not been so arranged. Quebec is hot in the summer and cold in the winter, but Bluff's climate is less intense. The cold weather is not very cold, the hot weather is not very hot, and the difference between the hottest month and the coldest is but 17 degrees Fahrenheit. In New Zealand, the rabbit plague began at Bluff. The man who introduced the rabbit there was banqueted and lauded, but they would hang him now if they could get him. In England, the natural enemy of the rabbit is detested and persecuted. In the Bluff region, the natural enemy of the rabbit is honored and his person is sacred. The rabbit's natural enemy in England is the poacher. In Bluff, its natural enemy is the stoat, the weasel, the ferret, the cat, and the mongoose. In England, any person below the air who is caught with a rabbit in his possession must satisfactorily explain how it got there, or he will suffer fine and imprisonment, together with extinction of his peerage. In Bluff, the cat found with a rabbit in its possession does not have to explain. Everybody looks the other way person caught noticing would suffer fine and imprisonment with extinction of his peerage. This is a sure way to undermine the moral fabric of a cat. Thirty years from now there will not be a moral cat in New Zealand. Some think there is none there now. In England the poacher is watched, tracked, hunted. He dare not show his face. In Bluff, the cat, the weasel, the stoat, and the mongoose go up and down, whether they will, unmolested. By a law of the legislature, posted where all may read, it is decreed that any person found in possession of one of these creatures dead must satisfactorily explain the circumstances, or pay a fine of not less than five pounds, nor more than twenty. The revenue from this source is not large. Persons who want to pay a hundred dollars for a dead cat are getting rarer and rarer every day. This is bad, but the revenue was to go to the endowment of the university. All governments are more or less short-sighted. In England they find the poacher, whereas he ought to be banished to New Zealand. New Zealand would pay his way and give him wages. It was from Bluff that we ought to have cut across to the west coast and visited the New Zealand's Switzerland, a land of superb scenery made up of snowy grandeurs and mighty glaciers and beautiful lakes. And over there also are the wonderful rivals of the Norwegian and Alaskan fjords. And for neighbor, a waterfall of 1,900 feet but we were obliged to postpone the trip to some later and indefinite time. November 6, a lovely summer morning, brilliant blue sky, a few miles out from Invarkergil, passed through vast level green expanses snowed over with sheep, fine to see, the green deep and very vivid sometimes, a other times less so, but delicate and lovely. Passenger reminds me that I'm in the England of the far south. Dunedin, the same date. Town justifies Michael Davitt's praises. 
the people are Scotch. They stopped here on their way from home to heaven, thinking they had arrived. The population is stated at 40,000 by Malcolm Ross, journalist, stated by an MP at 60,000. A journalist cannot lie. In the residence of Dr. Hawkin, he has a fine collection of books relating to New Zealand, and his house is a museum of Maori art and antiquities. He has pictures and prints in color of many native chiefs of the past, some of them of note in history. There is, there is nothing of the savage in the faces. Nothing could be finer than these men's features, nothing more intellectual than these faces nothing more masculine, nothing nobler than their aspect. The aboriginals of Australia and Tasmania looked the savage, but these chiefs looked like Roman patricians. The tattooing in these portraits ought to suggest the savage, of course, but it does not. The designs are so flowing and graceful and beautiful they are most satisfactory decoration. It takes but 15 minutes to get reconciled to the tattooing, and but 15 more to perceive that it is just the thing. After that, the undecorated European face is unpleasant and ignoble. Dr. Hawkeum gave us a ghastly curiosity, a lignified caterpillar with a plant growing out the back of its neck plant with a slender stem four inches high. It happened not by accident, but by design, nature's design. This caterpillar was in the act of loyally carrying out a law inflicted upon him by nature, a law purposely inflicted upon him to get him into trouble, a law which was a trap. In pursuance of this law, he made the proper preparations for turning himself into a night moth. That is to say, he dug a little trench, a little grave, and then stretched himself in it on his stomach and partially buried himself. Then nature was ready for him. She blew the spores of a peculiar fungus through the air with a purpose. Some of them fell into a crease in the back of the caterpillar's neck and began to sprout and grow. For there was soil there. He had not washed his neck. The roots forced themselves down into the worm's person and rearward along through its body, sucking up the creature's juices for sap. The worm slowly died and turned to wood. And here he is now, a wooden caterpillar, with every detail of his former physique delicately and exactly preserved and perpetuated, and with that stem standing up out of him for its monument, monument commemorative of his own loyalty and of nature's unfair return for it. Nature's always acting like that. Mrs. X said, of course, that the caterpillar was not conscious and didn't suffer. She should have known better. No caterpillar can deceive nature. If this one couldn't suffer, nature would have known it and would have hunted up another caterpillar. Not that she would have let this one go merely because it was defective. No, she would have waited and let him turn into a night moth and then fried him in a candle. Nature cakes a fish's eyes over with parasites, so it shan't be able to avoid its enemies or find its food. She sends parasites into the starfish's system, which clog up its prongs and swell them, make them so uncomfortable that the poor creature delivers itself from the prong to ease its misery, and presently he has to part with another prong for the sake of comfort. And finally with a third. And if it regrows the prongs, the parasite returns and the same thing is repeated. And finally, when the ability to reproduce prongs is lost through age, 
that poor old starfish can't get around anymore, so it dies of starvation. In Australia is prevalent a horrible disease due to the unperfected tapeworm. Unperfected, that is what they call it, I do not know why. For it transacts business just as well as if it were finished and frescoed and gilded and all that. November 9, to the Museum and Public Picture Gallery with the President of the Society of Artists. Some fine pictures there, lent by the Society of Artists, several of them bought, others came to them by gift. Next, to the Gallery of the Society of Artists, annual exhibition, just opened. Fine. Think of a town like this having two such collections as this, and a Society of Artists. It is so all over Australasia. If it were a monarchy, one might understand it. I mean an absolute monarchy where it isn't necessary to vote money, but take it. Then art flourishes. But these colonies are republics. Republics with a wide suffrage. Voters of both sexes. This one is New Zealand. In republics, neither the government nor the rich private citizen is given much to propagating art. All over Australasia, pictures by famous European artists are bought for the public galleries, by the state, and by societies of citizens, living citizens, not dead ones. They rob themselves to give, not their heirs, this society of artists here owns its building, built it by subscription.